I also heard you uh, get a point about Taraji. Let's talk about that. Okay, let's talk about. Let's talk about it. I, right. I've discussed it a few times, so so okay. let, let's go ahead and talk about that. I. I, I want you, you, you know to Taraji, understand. By the way, I know Taraji. You know her personally. I, I don't know. I did one interview with her during a just right, uh, and I don't think junkie. she she's not mad at you because of the the your position in it. But understand, wait, have you have you guys talked no. about me? Okay, I know she's no reason to be mad at you. Yeah. You brought more light to the situation. Yeah, to understand, so we can look at it differently. Yeah, some of my comments have gone viral. Right, Sharon Stone had the same problem. Sharon Stone, Sharon Stone, who everyone knew who was in, still was in the same situation where they would not pay her. Okay. Um, Monique came out. It wasn't even just being black. It's females. Serena Williams doesn't get paid what, what men, uh, uh, tennis players were getting. Well, f- female sports. Uh, well, when it comes have... to Serena Williams, it's a different situation because. People watch the game to see, watch okay, the, to come enough. see her. Yeah. So when they when okay, they pay enough. the top dollar to come see you, you should get top you should dollar. Get top dollar, get it. But they have women have so have been underpaid for so long to the point where now it's so obvious to me because I remember not seeing it. Women in so many different positions. So I understood her, and I, I, I understood I understood what you were thinking. But if she didn't say anything. And then Sharon Stone doesn't say anything, and and Monique doesn't say anything, and the um, uh, next actress doesn't say anything. Uh, Anne Hathaway doesn't say like they have to say something to get the level yeah. of the money back up. I, I, I get it. And number one, I am all for people expressing themselves. At no point have I said that she shouldn't have the total and complete right to express her frustration in a business that she's put so much of her life into. I'm also a huge Taraji P. Henson fan. Right. I've seen essentially all her movies and every role she's killed it. Every role. Every, every role. She's not slouched in a single movie I've ever seen. She's always, I feel, was a standout, goes above and beyond. If it was up to me, she would be the star of every movie that I would ever put together. Right? Because I think she is that good. Unfortunately, I'm not a filmmaker. You know, I make YouTube content. It's a little bit different. My point in what I said was this. As a business owner, I've, I've dealt with Hollywood as well. My first project, my first real film project was a documentary, which was purchased by Image Entertainment. It was on Netflix. It was on BET. I got a check. It took like four months of sitting in a, an edit bay, put it all together. I was the producer and the director. Took a lot of work, a lot of my life. It was a great project. It was, you know, at the Grand Lakes Theater, you know, in Oakland. I was very proud of it. My parents were there to see it and everything mm-hmm. else like that. I got a check for like 25000 and never saw a residual payment after that. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. And to this day, you're talking about 16 years later, I've never seen a penny off Ghost Ride the Whip ever since I got paid. Why? Because they claimed it didn't make its money back. You know, Hollywood has very interesting accounting yeah, practices. Yeah, they do. You they know do. what I'm saying? Yes, they Very do. Very interesting accounting practices, which made me say, okay, I can get mad and I can complain about how I'm not getting paid what I feel I deserve based on the work I put in. And this was a project that was very well received. You could ask anyone in the Bay, they've seen that project. Mm-hmm. Or I could say, okay, instead of working with these big companies and waiting for them to pay me, I'm going to put the power in my own hands and I'm going to start creating my own projects. And that was my point when I said what I said about Taraji. That look, and a lot of people point out, well, she's an actress. She's not a director. She's not a producer. She's not a writer. You're absolutely right. But she has access to all these people and they all love her and respect her. So in my point of view, there's nothing stopping her from creating her own projects. When you compare her to the Reese Witherspoons of the world and say, oh, look, Reese Witherspoon's worth a billion dollars and she's only worth like 12 million because Reese Witherspoon created her own production company and started creating her own projects. She had the opportunity. Taraji has the opportunity. You're not going to tell me she doesn't she does have the opportunity. Now. She's had, she's always had the opportunity. She Dude. just chose not to do it. And that's in her, that's her right. But if you want, in the words of uh, Fred the Hammer Williamson, who's done a million movies, he said, he who counts the money first counts the most money. Okay. So 
All I said was, and, and me and Michael Jai White were here yesterday talking about this, and we're actually saying how these conversations might actually trigger something in her to actually right. do this, is, yo, put together your own projects. Partner with a director, partner with a writer, partner with a producer. Create your own projects. They may not be Benjamin Button with a $150 million budget, but it'll be a project that you have ownership in, and you will get paid based on how well the project actually performs. Or... If it's a great project that you put together on your own, there'll be a bidding war over that project. Do you think the role she played in Benjamin Button, that she was only, Brad made 10 million. She made 150,000. Do, do you? She that, asked for 500, they only gave her 150. So you understand, not only as a female, as a black person, we were, it's so common to be dissed that we so used to it, that we take it in stride. Even in that situation, they were like, as important of a role that she had in Benjamin Button, they still was like, we don't care, there's a ceiling that you just can't see. Her role was an important role, but it wasn't, she was like a fifth lead. She um, was very important. No, no, no. no. If, you, if you look, there's actually a listing. She's like fifth lead on that role. That she should tell you that was a problem and, too. And, and the end. And she ended up getting a um, nominated for Best Supporting Actress in that role. And ultimately, look, she came in, she asked for 500. They said, all we could do is 150. She could have walked away from that role. But she decided, you know something? I'm going to take less money and I'm going to be- Show this, my stuff. I'm going to show my stuff and I'm going to kill this role. I'm going to get nominated for this role. And I'm sure she made millions of dollars- because of her performance in that role after the fact. You know how entertainment goes. How many free interviews have you done in your life? Oh yeah, a bunch. How many free interviews have I done? Tons. Right. You do a lot of stuff for free or for very low money because at the end of the day, there's different reasons you do things when it comes to publicity and certain looks and stuff like that, and you'll make the money later on. You know what I'm saying? Do you understand why she's upset? Benjamin Button came out before 2010. Yeah. She took the pay cut then. To yeah. get into 2024 and be the same sh sugar honey iced tea, that's not right. She's a nominated actress. Yes. She should have been revered on that set and paid. With, but people were like, hey, we don't care what you did before. What have you done for me lately? That's what she's talking about. It's like she doesn't get the so, respect so, she's so supposed clearly, to So clearly, from my point of view as a business owner, the route that she's taking of going to these third party companies and expecting them to pay what she We still gotta get wants. past the gatekeeper. So let me tell you why Tyler I say you Perry, gotta... Tyler Perry went all around the gatekeepers, created his own production company, built his own studio, and is worth a billion dollars. Doing non-traditional lower budget films, and she and she actually got her biggest check ever from Tyler Perry. Correct. To star in that one in that one movie. But that's but that's what and I'm that's, trying to and tell you. And that's what I'm saying. If I was her, I'd be like, fuck Universal, fuck Sony. I'm just going to rock with Tyler Perry. And I'll just keep doing Tyler Perry movies. He values what it is that I do. Or I'm going to start putting together films where I'm not going to take anything up front. I'll just take a percentage of the film, which a lot of actors have done throughout but, history. Like she said, she still got to eat every day. She still, it was hard to live here in California and not go out there hustling all the time. Even if she does hustle, and doesn't get the movie or gets the movie and she finishes, she can't do it the next thing because she's still under contract here. It's not like like it was they were dropping well, millions and millions. Movies don't take a year to put together. You're shooting for a certain amount of yeah, time. Yeah, but then you they, don't they, get they, the audition done. for the, the next role or the next role or this the next role. That's what I'm saying. Role. Fuck these auditions. Like at some point as an adult, you have to realize this is not giving me what I want. Listen, I love DJing. I love it. I adore it. It was it, it was the fire in my in my veins to be in front of a crowd with thousands of people and rocking out. I love it. At some point in time, I said, I'm getting older. This DJ shit is not going to keep <laughs> working into my 40s and 50s and 60s. You know, by my early 30s, I said, I have to find something different. This is where Vlad TV started to form early on. Originally, it was with DVDs. And it slowly, you know, when YouTube came around, I saw the opportunity of it, a chance to own my own content. And look, you and I live close to each other. Yeah. You're way more famous than I am. Right. Way more famous. 
but we're neighbors. Exactly what you Chris Rock said. Chris Rock said. I chose to take less fame, but more money. Right. You see what I'm saying? But so understand when you have fame, that doesn't bring more money. It doesn't it always bring less more money. money. Sometimes, sometimes it does. And this is a decision that every entertainer must make. Are you going to take the the most fame you could possibly get, which will oftentimes be a little bit less money than you were hoping for, or do you want to be less famous and have ownership? Well, Tyler Perry took route number two and became a billionaire. Right, but that's Tyler Perry. He's not nominated for any Academy Awards, and he probably what? never will be. He's an anomaly, and he's okay with that. He's an anomaly. Now, so, so let me tell you, because Regina King makes her own stuff. Exactly. Um, Queen Latifah. Yeah. Um, but those are what I meant by gatekeepers. I'm not talking about Tyler Perry. And, and, and hold on, oh. do you think that Queen Latifah does things by herself? Because she doesn't. No. Shaquem. Has right. been her business partner from day one. You build a team that's of people Roger around you. you. To, not, that's what I was telling you about you being build an a athlete. Team. You build a team. It seems easy. It's hard. Like, you know how hard it is for me to trust people because of all the stuff I've been through? You, it's hard to build a team. You you just can't. It's just not as easy as it seems. Nothing, nothing you're trying significant to live life. is easy. It's always right. hard. It's always hard. It's always more. It's easier to show up to a job and get a paycheck than to build your own company and pay other people. But you know, you, I have 20 people on payroll. It's not easy. There's a lot of pressure on me. Right. Okay. Sometimes it means I've had, I remember I had a year where I didn't pay myself anything just so all my staff members can get paid. I've never missed a payroll ever. And one year it meant that I got zero as my salary. Wow. And I, and I ate that. I didn't cry to any of my staff members. I didn't lower any of their salaries. I'm like, yo, they're doing the job they're supposed to do. The company is not doing well because I'm the CEO and I'm the one steering the ship, so I'm not going to get paid. But what I'm telling you is that ownership will trump paychecks in the long run almost every time. Unless you're an anomaly like a Tom Cruise or a huge Johnny Depp, A-list, mega, international megastar. And look, like, me and Michael Jai White actually talked about this because when, when she was doing that interview and she was crying, she was saying, oh, yeah, what they always tell me is that, you know, that my celebrity doesn't translate overseas. And what he brought up was very interesting. He said, this is true, but not just because she's black or a woman. It's because the only thing that really translates overseas are action movies. White actors don't translate overseas when they're doing dramatical films or comedies. You think someone in Spain gives a shit about an American comedian? They have their own megastar comedians. They have their own megastar dramatic actors. They're not watching you unless you're like doing a superhero movie or you're killing shit or blowing shit up. Action movies have always translated, whether you're white, black, Asian, look what the Korean market is doing right now. Yeah. They're killing it right now. Squid Games and all these other like fighting films. Action translates. Action Unfortunately, trans Taraji is not an action star. So yes, she doesn't translate overseas. Not because she's black or a woman. Any Meryl Streep doesn't translate overseas. Well, hold on. In some movies that she should have transferred, should have, Benjamin Button worked overseas. Great film. But so, but that was like more of like a science fiction film. Right. So let me hit you with what I realized. And this was being on this show, right? So I was supposed to be in Ghana in like 60 days. Remember I told you I was buying land in Ghana, okay. right? Finally going to see what we put our money into. Nice. Uh, and I want to take what, I want to take, one of my daughters, and then I wound up having to take two, and I was like, oh, I got this other hustle. Now I got to watch these broads because, you know, I got to be Papa Bear. I realized there was one billion Africans. I realized in Nigeria there was 200 million Africans. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, how do I get in a Nolly film, Nollywood film, how do I get those stars to mix with American stars? Let's do a movie that, that, that works for both, mm -hmm. for that star. And that way, we can at least have 2 million people, at least 1%, right? Yeah. 1% might come see my movies or be involved in it. Mm -hmm. That's what the difference is. We have to start doing things like the Koreans. They're not making the movies for anyone else. They're just making the movie. Mm -hmm. 
and this is what we're putting forth. We're not, we're not literally targeting anything. We're targeting great, great work. Mm. 